Do you ever find in art a sacred message from the divine? Yeah, so again, you know, here too, uh, Claudia, that you can either talk about, uh, you know, religious art of the past, right, which is uh, overtly uh, trying to express something religious and sacred, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and some people, again, like we're talking about different spiritual approaches, uh, depending on who you are, you will uh, either experience something or not experience something. Mm -hmm. So some people, uh, if they belong to us, if you're brought up, born and brought up or grown into accepted a certain religion, then the stories of that religion um, evoke emotion in you. And so uh, when you look at that, you feel that uh, sacredness. Sacredness is, again, a kind of emotion. It's, it's uh, the emotion of the numinous right? Uh, the numinous, okay. there's something holy or sacred. Okay. So uh, it's related to wonder. That mm. is that there's something going beyond our um, ability to comprehend. So, but it's a specific kind of wonder. Okay. It's a wonder that uh, connects with something transcendental, which is a presence and which, which reaches out to us. There's a reciprocity right, in the sacred, that sacredness is not merely a sense of wonder, but a sense of holy wonder, right? There's a, 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 the sense of something which is um, divine in it. So if it, is a, if it is religious art, it will reach out to you in that way if you are of that kind. So for example, I was born Hindu in India. Mm -hmm. And by that, I don't mean that, um, you know, I went through some kind of training to become a Hindu, but I was surrounded by the customs and, um, you know, activities and understandings, what today we call doxa, the unexamined understandings of Hinduism. And so um, along with the community that follows that, I experienced similar kinds of emotions when I went to, say, an Indian temple, right? Mm -hmm. And these emotions are emotions of the sacred, right? Now, um, as I grew older, I uh, relativized this. In other words, I came across other traditions as well. And that's one of the effects of modernity, right? We were talking last time about the reception of Indian art mm -hmm. by uh, Europeans that saw them as monsters until the, the late 19th century, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but then we are talking about mediators, like art historians who can explain, unlock the symbolism of these things, right? If yes, there's symbolism. So when that happens, then it becomes universal. Like, even for me, I would, let's say, uh, read about uh, Christianity or read about the depiction of a certain school um, in the Renaissance, right? Mm -hmm. And once I read about it and look at it, uh, I overcome my cultural boundaries and experience the sacred. Now, on the other hand, you may say, can we experience the sacred without any uh, reading anything or mm -hmm. without any uh, mediation, unmediated, uh, immediate or spontaneous exactly. experience of the sacred. And we can also ask the question, if we take out the religious, can we experience the sacred, right? Can I look at a landscape and feel that it is sacred? Can I look at an abstract painting and feel that it is sacred? I'd say, yes, it can happen and it does happen, but it's much more plural there. It's not everybody will experience it in the same way. Those who are looking for something deeper, uh, as they look at it, suddenly something deeper may speak to it. I feel uh, modernism, uh, a big part of modern art, um, 
is uh, the attempt to depict uh, the sacred, to mm -hmm. depict um, you know individual contacts with uh, something transcendent. And if that is the case, say a very simple painting by Mark Rothko, for example, uh, many people feel the sacred when they look at it. Um, you know, there was a spiritual intent to a lot of the uh, minimalists in abstract expressionism in, in, in America. Uh, similarly, many people experience the sacred when they come across uh, even the quite um, disturbed paintings, I'd say, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, of, of, uh, of, say, Vincent van Gogh. Vincent van Gogh, whose life was quite disturbed. And uh, some of that, um, you know, the power or uh, intensity of his life is expressed in his art. But there is a certain uh, deep, uh, you know, quality to it that can evoke uh, evoke uh, the sublime and the sacred uh, in his in his art. So these things, I would say, are individual responses. But if somebody has that response and they talk about it, they write about it, this is where the entire mediation by uh, the world of uh, art criticism and art history comes in. Uh, museology, art crit criticism, art history, journalism uh, prepares our vision so that what we would not be able to see uh, we are guided to see and that many people then experience it becomes a common experience uh, can experience the sacred um, I would say that there may be many other cases that are unmediated that haven't actually become common experiences but have the potential <laughs> to evoke the sacred if you uh, experience it like that you can you know, explain it to others, interpret it to others in that way. Thank you, Devash. This is a very good answer, actually, because include a different point of views. <laughs> yeah.